Hi yogis! Today I'm going to answer another question that was submitted to me after my open suggestion that any of you with yoga related questions across the board can email me or social media message me and um, submit your questions. So this one's kind of a big one and it has layers to it so I'll do my best. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Here is my question for you. How would you define your spiritual orientation? Also wondering who are your teachers and is there an organized spiritual framework that you study? Yes, let me read you the whole thing and then I'll, I'll come back and answer. Um, There's a, a lot in here. I'm not sure when I look to organized traditions like Buddhism and Hinduism, is there a religion connected to yoga? or even a set of practices that go deeper. I'm guessing that the eight limbs would be, be a practice or the practice. Any food for thought would be appreciated. Okay, so it, it's a huge question. Um, one thing I would suggest watching is there's a movie, a, a yoga film, on the history of yoga called Yoga Unveiled. You can get the DVD and you can probably rent it online. Um, because it is, it is a complicated and intricate um, question in terms of yoga and religion. So in this documentary or this film about the history of yoga, it really beautifully breaks down all the different branches and iterations of spirituality and religion um, and yoga that have sort of unfolded over the years. So as history progressed, yoga has intertwined kind of in and out with these other spiritual and religious traditions. Um, and it's split in different directions and separated, as you can imagine, over thousands of years. So there are many ways in which yoga and certain kinds of yoga intersect with Hinduism. Um, in some ways-ish, Buddhism, although Buddhism split quite radically and is very, very different from a lot of the philosophical orientations of yoga. And now there's been sort of a, um, a new orientation of modern yoga teachers blending Buddhism with yoga asana, but it actually split off at one point in history. Um, so, I mean, it, it does intertwine with Hinduism. There, there are some areas where it is similar. The Yoga Sutras radically different than some other paths of yoga. So it's a really huge, vast field. In essence, my personal lineage has been a Hatha Yoga or Tantric Yoga approach. And that really came from my study with Rod Stryker and his lineage, which is Pandit Rajamani Tigunayat which goes through Swami Rama and the tradition of the Himalayan masters. So this is an orientation, a very spiritual orientation that is very open, but very much about connecting with the divine, that there is a divine energy, which is radically different than Buddhism. Buddhism does not speak of divine energy or God. Um, but it's open in that you can choose how you want to call it, what you want to call it. Um, and there are many goddesses that represent these different kinds of energy, but it is absolutely suggesting that we connect with this divine godlike energy through our practices. Um, in addition to that, one of my teachers from a similar tradition who is in India, comes from the order of Nath yogis, and this is Hatha Yoga. The Hatha Yoga Pradipika um, comes from the order of Nath yogis, and said to be the supreme teacher is Shiva, supreme consciousness. So this is the tantric model of Shiva and Shakti, and that the goal of this kind of yoga is to make our energy such that these forces unite and we become these realized, beautiful, um, embodied beings of divine energy. So that's my particular orientation. Let's see what else is here. Um, 
Yes. So that is, that's my framework and that's where I come from. Now, circling back to Yoga Sutras and again, Buddhism, um, you know, as Buddhism split off, there is no discussion of yoga asana in Buddhism. There, to my knowledge, I'm not super studied in Buddhism, but there's uh, not a lot of discussion on cultivation of energy. It's more about mindfulness and equa equanimity and these sort of loving, compassionate orientations that don't necessarily require you to do yoga asana or to orient towards anything um, spiritual, so to speak, or godlike. Now, as you go through the history of yoga and all these different branches of yoga are developing, um, we get Tantra Yoga, which is this very physical, energetic practice, that's my orientation, and we get um, yoga from Patanjali. Now Patanjali's yoga is a different orientation and while he does reference God, it's very open. It's absolutely open to any kind of, um, of choice on the practitioner's part in terms of which kind of God you use. Um, but it's about the mind and meditation and he doesn't offer physical practices or pranayamas per se. Um, and he doesn't reference the cultivation of energy. So in the Yoga Sutras, um, the orientation is really about meditation and the mind, gaining understanding and control of the mind. He uses Ishwara Pranidhanam, which is kind of a universal um, reference to God. Here comes my doggy. And, um, you know, he, he gives very open-ended meditation techniques. So it is not a tantric form where um, the cultivation of energy and the divine is supported or discussed. So <laughs> big questions and that was a lot of an answer. And what I would suggest is, um, you know, personal study and exploration to really find the orientation that speaks to you. When I discovered Rod Stryker, it really, really spoke to me because at the core of this orientation, the spiritual practice, is the belief or the knowledge or the understanding that the ultimate base of all reality, we have this beautiful, loving, um, luminous energy. And that the practice of yoga is to connect us to that that we actually want to experience and embody this beautiful, luminous, um, graceful energy. Um, it is not saying that the basis of all reality is emptiness or the basis of all reality is nothingness. It is saying that the basis of all reality is beauty, this innate, innate loving, beautiful energy. So that really spoke to me and um, that it's very much an all-encompassing kind of orientation. The question is, um, are your practices making you a stronger, more confident, more um, loving and powerful human being? Or are your practices um, supporting more fear, more negativity? Um, you know, are your practices in any way increasing your fear? rather than your joy and your your potency so that's what spoke to me and you know i know lots of yoga teachers that that, that are avid buddhists and that really speaks to them so it's a big field and it's a matter of finding um, what works for you what really speaks to you and what accelerates you on your personal path so thank you that was a mouthful I hope that was helpful to you and keep the questions coming. I love it. I love the, the wide variety of questions that I'm getting. I also got a question on um, how can yoga help with allergies? And while to my knowledge, there aren't really specific yoga poses, um, this is a function of kapha season. And um, there is a fantastic uh, podcast that's going to be out in March on how the use of Ayurveda can prevent seasonal allergies. And I'm going to provide a link in the email to that. It's um, John 
Dulard, I think is his name, Life Spa is the name of his Ayurvedic company, and he has a podcast where he's going to address that. So there are things we can do, dietary and lifestyle things we can do to reduce seasonal allergies. Okay, keep the questions coming. Love it. Wish you well, and um, see you next week. Namaste. Thank you.